Alright guys, this is my 1998 Regal Cuddy Cabin, 9 person boat um, and it's got a Chevy 350 or 5.7 in it um, it came stock with a 5.0 305 I believe and uh, that engine blew up the first owner I believe put a new crate engine in it around 2005 and then I just bought it from the second owner and basically um, I'll put a video here of it running it does run but um, it's had some issues it won't idle down and um, last year the owner was running it and he started smelling rubber and the uh, exhaust manifold and this is a oh this is a Volvo Penta eh, Volvo Penta outdrive which is not as desirable as the Merc Cruiser so I got it for a very good price because of those issues um, it has a brand new alternator which I'll talk about that in a second but basically these fern coats here um, started burning and he smelled the rubber and what that means is the impeller uh, went out and so um, basically it overheated and most likely um, most people try to drive it back to the boat launch uh, and they think they can limp it home instead of getting it towed and because of that it basically cooked the head gaskets um, it does run it does fire up uh, when I looked at it um, the guy told me he said hey I had water and low compression in uh, number three and number five um, he gave me a compression checker we um, we checked it put it in and actually um, he said it was gonna blow 60 psi uh, they both blew 120 so I don't know if he did the trick where you you put a little oil in there and it uh, seals up the rings and um, can blow you know better psi um, I doubt it because I pulled the plugs first and um, it did blow water out so essentially if you don't know too much about these um, I'm, I'm learning as well so I'm not an expert but uh, it's important to have your boat winterized because uh, there's no radiator on a boat right so the impeller um, pulls water from the outdrive in the back um, up to here and then there's the main water pump on the engine as well and then it circulates through the block and then also through the exhaust headers here um, to keep it cool right so you know when you winterize a boat you pull the drain plugs there's also drain plugs on the bottom here you drain everything out um, some people put coolant in there and run it just to make sure there's um, no coolant or no water in the block uh, I am taking a risk here there's a chance that the block is cracked and you know whatever but um, yeah it's a risk I was willing to take at the price um, I did run it I put my head underneath it tried to see if it was leaking anywhere I didn't see anything um, it blew water out of three and five as well I did check number two on that side um, I should have pulled them all but I didn't I, but I didn't get any water out of there and it also blew 120 psi so um, I really got to go through every single one and, and compress and check them um, I should probably do that before I tear this down uh, before I put a bunch of work into it maybe I will but basically the last test I just did was I got air and I um, you know if your if your engines not on um, top dead center uh, I believe is where all the valves are closed I'm not actually sure what that part of the cycle is called but when the intake and exhaust valves are closed that's when you want to pressurize the cylinder with air and what I was trying to see is if I got bleed by from five into three um, I didn't but what I did get was a bubbling noise and let me see if I can replicate that without my compressor kicking on um, okay all right so you should hear bubbling I don't know if that picked up on the camera and I actually just got a bunch of water on my hands so essentially it's leaking down um, there's a potential it's the gasket here which uh, just has the exhaust split um, but that would mean the exhaust valve on number five would have to be open 
um, and then I wouldn't get uh, like a full compression blow like that anyway. So essentially, it's the head gasket. Uh, should I do both sides? I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, I'd love to just do this side, but if we're honest, while I'm here, I should do the other side. While it's all fresh in my head and I have it in my driveway torn apart, right? You don't want to go out to the lake or in our case a river and have to get towed back and you pretty much burn a whole day. So, um, and you know, I have um, muffs on the out drive which supply cooling water to this. Um, so I can test fire it in the driveway and you can run it because it's running and that's how there's water in here right now. Um, don't ever want to run it dry without that. You always want to put the muffs on the back and I'll show you that. But uh, yeah, fairly common crate engine. Pretty much every boat in the world has a Chevy small block in it. Um, Holly Marine carburetor. Um, it's another thing to look out for um, if uh, you're buying a boat and someone's like, hey, I got this engine, you can just have it. Uh, you also, marine engines, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, spin the opposite direction, and the carburetor is probably a uh, not a marine grade one. I'm not sure the exact difference, but there is a difference there. And then also, you don't, you know, these are the, these exhaust headers are the most expensive part of the exhaust manifold i think for this we i had a thought that maybe um it was a problem with these like cracked inside here which is still a possibility but um that is also expensive it's about 800 bucks for both sides um so yeah there's a little bit i mean a boat is just break out another thousand that's what boat stands for it's a constant money hole um and it's a pleasure vehicle. It's not like a, you know, a car or truck. You get work out of it. So it always seems like, oh, I gotta put another thousand into a boat. But that's a risky take. So my advice is, if you want to get into boating, um, and you want to do it on a budget, and you're familiar with engines, buy cheap. Buy buy something that's uh, need, needs a little bit of work. Most boat owners don't want work, and most marine. Um, shops are extremely expensive and they can do that because that's what they can charge so um, and all they do is work on Chevy engines essentially so anyways enough talking I'm gonna drain down um, here and then there's one underneath and start to pull this top part off and I'll let you guys watch me do that and we'll pull the alternator off oh the story behind that is guy um, brought it home he Apparently had it at indoor storage this winter, which is good. And put a new battery in it. He put it in backwards and smoked the alternator and just started uh, catching on fire. So new alternator, <laughs> this thing's probably like $40. Like it's a standard Chevy, like Napa AutoZone um, alternator. So um, because of that, I was also a little weary because he could have back drove like some other problems to the boat. Like for example, the the uh, the radio is not working and stuff like that. Littler stuff. It seems like the main Ryan harness is fine. He caught it before it got too hot um, and burned out like somewhere in the line. But uh, I probably want to try to get a visual on the on the whole electronics system. Okay, enough talking. Let's pull this thing apart.
Hey, what's up guys? So it's a few days later. I got the one side of the engine torn apart, um, the head, intake manifold, valve cover off, um, the exhaust, and um, I did confirm that the issue was the head gasket. As you can see here between cylinders three and five, just as we suspected, the head gasket is toast. You could tell a difference just in the rubberized material is burned out and I believe this section here is where the water uh, cooling water goes through and you can see it's all gunked up um, because carbon has been uh, backfiring from the cylinder and mixing with that water to make that sludge so even this one you can see we have a clean gasket and this is burned out so that's good news I guess because um, Everything else looks pretty good. Um, I need to clean up this head and I'm going to check it for flatness. Um, even if it's out a little bit, I think for this season, I'm going to probably just run one of the thick gaskets. Um, I was looking, they sell them anywhere between 40 thousandths and to 80 thousandths. Um, so I need to check the specs on that, clean up, uh, pull the intake gaskets off, get all new gaskets. Now it looks like someone might have changed the valve cover gaskets at some point. But other than that, it seems like I'm the first one in this engine since, you know, Chevrolet, um, you know, dropped off and built this crate engine probably in 2005. So, uh, you know, 15 years of run time. Sounds about right. Also need to clean up the uh, exhaust manifold. Um, this is a Volvo Penta specific unit. And here's the actual headers and the exhaust manifold. You can see some, some rust and water in there. Um, so I'll have to clean all that up. Uh, and then while I'm at it, I'm going to change the thermostat and the temperature uh, sending unit. Uh, they're cheap. And then uh, I still got to pull the other, the other head off, clean up everything and put it back together. So a little slow, but um, yeah, we'll get there. So. Um, another issue is every time it rains the top leaks real bad and it's a nice top it's a uh, uh, I can't think of the name uh, we'll go check it out but it's a good branded top but I am gonna spray this stuff this is recommended best stuff it has PTEF in it um, and apparently is the best waterproofer so I'm gonna put some of this in a spray bottle and uh, Spray down that cover, might do two coats. We'll see how it does. And then I also picked up some, well, I picked up some cabinet uh, magnets because the doors aren't closing properly. I put them on, and of course, they don't hold the doors. So uh, I'm gonna, I might have to put two on there or figure it out. Um, and then uh, I picked up some of this stuff, which I've used before on like Wave Runners. It's a marine base two part epoxy. Um, it's not like a gel coat, it's more of like a epoxy. I think it does yellow in the sun with UV, which kind of sucks. But um, what I want to do with that epoxy is clean up some of the chips, like right here. Um, probably just put a piece of tape here to catch some runoff and then slowly brush it on uh, with multiple layers. Um, to fill that in there's also a little mark on the other side but um oh yeah this top so this top is a uh tailor made that's what it's called as you can see on that and it's it's had a rough life uh, i can't even really secure the back here that's why i have the tarp because the the big cover on the back holds so much water when it gets wet so there is a center pole I have too, and then the bimini top, I'm gonna to coat that also. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna spray this down, and hopefully we can get some water to beat up on it so that it doesn't soak through and just um, make mold in the interior like we just cleaned out. And Yeah, so that's uh, today's update. I'm gonna spray that down, and I'll show you guys uh, inside here what the engine looks like with the head off, so move forward. So I'm spraying on the Starbright, just gotta sprayer bottle using the uh, leaf blower to get it all cleaned off and you can see it penetrates fairly well actually um, it smells kind of like an oil 
and uh, I've got about you know most of it covered here it does take, take some time um, I don't know if you're supposed to penetrate this much but um, this thing is leaking real bad so I'm just going for it and we'll see how it dries out you're supposed to wait six hours I'm gonna do the bimini top as well but basically I just you know go over it like this so I'm gonna go the other side and do some of the front I'm really trying to hit the uh, threaded seams um, as well as possible because I know water tends to seep in there and I want it to soak into the threads and we've got some like buttons missing and stuff but uh, for the most part it does cover the whole boat and uh, once I put that center pole in it should shed the water to the back and then we'll use the same stuff to cover the rear seat or, or um, I have 303 protectant which is a UV protectant so yeah let's do that other side and then let it dry All right, so the cover sat all day in the sun for about, yeah, I don't know, nine hours. And uh, I got a bucket of water here. I don't want to, I'm going to be working underneath here, so I don't want to soak myself, but we'll do a little water, see how it beads up. That's interesting, there's like a line across here. That's interesting. Look at that. That's incredible. That was so much better than it was wow nice so I'm gonna do the bimini top next but uh, I wanna work on the engine tonight so let's pull this all off alright I'm back it's a couple of days later um, Gonna work on this engine, gonna get the other head pulled off. Um, I got all my bolts and everything labeled and organized in there, including like the push rods are bagged with the um, parts that correspond to that particular cam. Um, and I labeled the head as well. Plus I have, well I have it on video, but it's too dark. So I apologize for the GoPro footage. I'm gonna try to get a light in here to do this other side. But I always try to cover this with a bag, um, just to make sure no foreign stuff gets in here. Give you a good look at it here too. Um, not too bad. It looks like I'm the first one in here since uh, this crate engine was delivered from, you know, from Jasper. It's a Jasper engine, I guess, um, who probably buys blocks and then, uh, you know, builds them. So. I did call um, Napa to try to get a head gasket kit that extra thick, but um, they're like, what year is it? Obviously, what, what truck is it, whatever. I'm like, well, it's a, it's a Chevy 5.7, you know, 350 engine. Um, and they're like, well, the last time they made those was 99. So I'm curious, I'm gonna try to get a block number off here, see what year it is. Um, Cause very well could be that the block is from you know the 90s and I'm guessing it was replaced in the 2000s so um, yeah but you can see it all you got to pull the intake manifold off left this wiring harness here um, this side I'm probably gonna have to take a little more wiring apart to get that um, main fuse switch there off of the exhaust manifold and then pull that side down because I'm going to do both heads. So, and move this uh, thermostat housing out of the way officially. So, all right, let's pull it apart.
All right, so we're gonna do a little patching on the boat here. I got this um, marine epoxy, it's white. And I've got some fiberglass cracks. Uh, there's a few other spots on the boat I'm gonna touch up. But I'm just gonna build it up with multiple layers of this using like a Q-tip. So I'll just mix it up in here. Um, this stuff's pretty good. I've used it on wave runners and stuff before. Um, and uh, it, it can bond to stuff wet, apparently, so it's good to have on the boat as well. It won't do anything major, but for small cracks, it's perfect. So and it's only like five bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link below. All right, so we'll mix that up and just put it on there.
Okay, so I'm finally at the stage of putting the new head gaskets on and get everything cleaned up. And I'm having an issue already. Um, every hole on this Felpro gasket, this is a marine grade, apparently, um, head gasket. Everything looks like it's lining up good. But then, uh, I've already kind of damaged this, which is kind of upsetting me. The, uh, spot with the alignment pins this one's like pinched in and this one's like triangular on the alignment dowels now this is just it's just odd um, that that it's like that I, I just don't understand um, it kind of seems like this one you know I could get a socket and kind of tap it on and it would hold nice, which makes sense to me, but this one is just way undersized. Um, I was trying to read online uh, about this, and um, unless I have it upside down, I can try that. Maybe there's the dowels are sized differently. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, just freaking weird. I guess some people online drilled theirs out, which probably isn't a problem. There's no uh, coolant on, over there. Um, it doesn't it doesn't matter if that's a little bit bigger, but jeez, like come on, spend like a hundred bucks on gaskets. And... Ah, yeah. So, anyways, um, unless I got something wrong, I'm just reading now. I never cleaned these pistons up before, but uh, this one says 040. But the bore measures, um, doesn't measure 40 cal over, so, I don't know, regardless, like, the, the gasket looks nice in there, so I think it's the right size, it's just these stupid pens. Alright, I'll figure it out.
I'm gonna go over them again because that's what I do. They should all click. Some of them did need a little scoot. I'm trying to make sure this is as even as possible. Okay. Alright, so now everything's at 22. Second pass, short bolts at 55, which is the bottom ones, medium bolts, the out two outer ones at 65, and then the big top ones and middle center ones are at 75. So, oh, there's my half inch, I'm looking for that. I have this, um, I've never actually used one of these before, so let's see how this goes. This is a torque angle device. Looks pretty crazy, huh? So we'll start on the center one here. And the center one is a big one. So the big one goes to 75 degrees, which is almost 90, so you got to make sure you have enough clearance. So I can clamp this to the head, crack this wheel, set it at zero. Here at zero. And then turn it to 75 degrees. Triple check, long bolts. 75 degrees. I'm squared on there. I'm on the center bolt. So let's do it. That's like 55. This is going to be fun. Right there. 75 degrees. And you just continue with your torque sequence. We go to this one, reset back to zero. And hit this one at 75. Oh. You can uh, you can take this off and reset. Shouldn't change your angle. <clears throat> 75. Okay, so now we're gonna do the lower one. I've kind of already memorized the, the sequence here. Right here, now the short ones will go to 55. So we'll reset to zero and continue to do it. And just kind of concentrate because you want to know when you're on a long bolt, when you're on a head bolt. Okay, 55. Right there. Do the one next to it. Good. Yeah. Back up here. Go back to 75. Use 
These are tight, man. Okay, so we just did six. Now we're gonna go to seven. Which is, let's go to 55 on this.
seemed a little touchy before. We could adjust it later. All right, so what do I want to do for the next steps? Um, probably the distributor. And then I'll get the distributor on. And uh, I'm going to have to retine it because I screwed up. So I got to get number one on top dead center. Um, and then there's a little trick, like you angle it, the rotor towards um, number one. It should slip in and then, uh, yeah, it's going to suck. But if I get that distributor in, I can put the plugs in, I can put a distributor, fuel line, cooling. And we'll see if she fires, so we'll take us take a break and come back in a sec. Figure out Alright, so it's about to rain, so I called it quits for the day. Just gotta get the exhaust manifold on. But uh wanted to show you a new thing I just discovered. Um, I'm missing a lot of these rivets. So I bought this kit that comes with both sides and all you do is do that, do that, and it comes with this peening tool that sits, and I have a block of wood just so I don't smack the fiberglass, and you hold it down and peen it over. it right there. Let's see how it fits. Perfect. Now there are different size rivets so um, you might have to buy different kits. This one came with uh, the screw in pieces which I don't actually need right now and 3 ace uh, stuff. It was pretty cheap like nine bucks. I'll put a link below. I got all the back, got a rip there, but that's nice. I forgot to put the pole in, and I left the top up, but we'll see how it does in the storm.
first, turn it over, and uh, make sure it's all sounding good. So I just tried to start it. Not a good start. Don't have any uh, any grounds. Those fuses. I don't have any ground. I don't have any contact. I got nothing. That's not a good start. I don't know if this battery's dead. Could be. I had the negative lead off it. on there. I don't know what that is. I gotta trace that back. Let's see if we get something now. Okay, that's still died there. Filch pump. Okay, now we can bump it. Ready? Take two. I think I'm on top dead center on the compression stroke. I think so. I could be 180 out still. Um, I, I screwed this all up by not uh, putting it on TDC when I pulled the distributor out and marking it. It would have been plug and play. Plus I also had the firing order wrong um, on, the, uh, on the distributor. I had the plugs labeled incorrectly. So I fixed that. I'm on TDC. I think, and I've got it facing where it should be now. It was way out before. So I either got it or I'm out 180 and it'll backfire. So let's see. So it was running, but uh, something's off because it's backfiring now. 
Well, we got the first start up. That's good. So I think I think I'm close now because it sounds decent, and I think I had that correct. So I put the cap back on so it doesn't backfire, and I have the distributor loose, and um, I'm gonna try to get it to idle, and then I'll play with the timing just by ear, and then I'm gonna go get a timing light. So. Could be 180 out. Let's go. Let's advance it. Yeah, I think I'm too much advanced. We're going to go back. now okay Let's see if we got leaks I hear water that's good Alright guys, so I figured I'd give you a quick voiceover here. Um, basically what happened here, at this point I got it to idle and run, which was my goal. Um, I think the carburetor was actually off in the um, idle settings as well as the throttle itself uh, up by the steering wheel being sticky and it's still giving me problems to this day. But uh, basically what I'm trying to do, since I didn't have a timing light, um, was try to tune it by ear and that's basically advancing or retarding the spark timing um, in order to get it to run smoothly now um, you can screw this up real bad and mess up your timing um, and then you have pre-detonation issues and all sorts of other things um, but what I was shooting for by ear um, which I'm not an expert at this at all was uh, 10 to 12 degrees um, before top dead center essentially 
is what the timing light indicates when you um, shoot it at the flywheel. Now, I still haven't put a timing light on this thing, and I've run it uh, three or four times, and it, it runs great. And so you can do this by ear, but I highly recommend using a timing light, and I'm still going to do that at some point. Now I'm walking around the, the boat engine here and just checking for leaks. This is the first time since everything's sealed up, making sure I'm not leaking any oil or any uh, coolant, which is actually water in this case. Um, funny story that happened during all this, uh, I, I probably was messing with this for close to 45 minutes or so. The engine probably only ran for, let's say, 5 to 10 minutes. But I went around back, and I'll throw a video clip of this later, um, after this, this first run here, and my water was off. And now, what my setup was, was I had my garden hose hooked up to earmuffs that go over the drive. And basically, the drive then, um, it sucks in the water from the garden hose like it would when it was in the water, and that provides the cooling. And basically I went back there and there was no more water. I had dried up my well. Uh, yeah, I had power washed so many times at my house, different things, never ran out of water. And the one time where I'm firing up a brand new engine, I ran out of water. So super unfortunate. Um, though I've, I've talked to a couple of my buddies about it and they're like, it's not a big deal. Like. You, you didn't overheat it, you weren't revving the snot out of it. Um, it's just idling there. So it did have water in it. Um, the only big fear really is that I ran the impeller pump, which pumps up that water from the outdrive. I, I could have ran that dry. And the impeller is actually rubber and it's lubricated by water. Um, so that can be an issue. You can melt it and burn it up. I have not pulled it apart. I did crack one of the cooling hoses when I had it in the water one day and it was pumping up um, to the block or to the thermostat housing. So I think I was successful in not damaging that unit. Um, but yeah, putting so many hours into this thing and then running it without water is like the most frustrating thing when you've done everything right uh, up until this point or hope that I did everything right. But anyways, that's about it. I haven't really done a follow-up video past this point. I am going to drop some clips in here of the boat running. Um, I plan on making a follow-up video with adjusting the timing and fixing a ton of the other issues that are wrong with this boat. But essentially, like a few hours from this video, I took it out and it ran great. Um, as you could tell, I was probably rushing to get this done because I wanted to get it out on the lake. So yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please hit that bell on the subscribe um, right next to the subscribe button there and you'll get notified when I post new videos. Again, I'm trying to do videos once a week here and I hope to keep them interesting for you guys and uh, stick around definitely and share the video and uh, definitely give us a thumbs up as well. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later.